A fistfight ensued on top of the St. Oliver Bridge after a semi-truck was turned over, dumping about 40,000 pounds worth of various stakes into the Gorgonchuck Freeway this morning. Vegan protesters who were picketing the meat packing plant saw this not only as a victory for their cause, but also as an insult, as they witnessed several morning commuters pulling over and filling their cars with meat. Seeing that their plan had backfired, the vegans got into a brawl with the commuters, and local police were perplexed when their own police chief, Pennyworth, was found loading the truck of his luxury automobile with various meats. No comments were made by either the protesters or the police chief. More news at the top of the hour. Now it's time for Rants and Raves with our very own Good Time Charlie. Thanks, Tom. You know what I really hate? My wife. I wish women were like cars to the extent that you could trade them in every year for a better, more attractive model. But unfortunately, the priest at my marriage neglected to tell me that that was not possible. A divorce has to be mutual. And if you're a Catholic, you are double fucked. Pardon the interruption, good time, Charlie, but we've just received word that the White House has been taken over by cute, cuddly, oversized rabbits. Yes, the rumors that huge, fluffy bunnies have taken over the White House appear to be true. We now go to Phil Correspondent Dom Shingle for more information on this story. Thanks, Tom. It all started when two kids brought in two genetically altered bunny rabbits during an afternoon tour of the White House. During the tour, the rabbits got loose and started breeding. According to the science team, these rabbits are genetically altered to breed faster, look bigger, and more cuter than normal bunny rabbits. In the course of the three hours they were loose, they gave birth to two bunny rabbits, which bred four more. The exponential growth of these bunny rabbits is not unlike the Star Trek episode, The Trouble with Tribbles, in which the Tribbles, a cute and cuddly creature that breeds exponentially, all Almost destroyed the Enterprise. Of course, that couldn't happen with these bunnies, they're just too darn cute. In response to this, the President has announced a state of adorableness and has secluded himself in the Lincoln bedroom with several bunnies, and the sounds of high-pitched giggling can be heard from the other side of the White House. And with bunnies as cute as this, who can blame them? Tommy, I, Tommy, I know you can't see this, but a cute bunny rabbit has just leapt into my arms and it makes my heart melt. Oh, yes, it does. And oh my god, you're so cute. And I wish you could see this because he's nibbling on my hand. And not now, okay, okay, okay stop, stop that. that. That hurts. Ow, 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 stop. Oh my god, he's eating my hand. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, Dom? Dom? Uh, uh, we are having some problems keeping Dom Shingle on the air right now. We will give you more updates on this story as it occurs. We now take you back to Good Time Charlie and his rants and raves already in progress. He looks at me with his stoner eyes and said very slowly, We don't have any more stakes. The truck crashed on the overpass, and we won't have any more stakes for at least three days. Bullshit, I cried. So I jumped over the counter, ran to the freezer, and guess what I found? Boxes upon boxes of steaks. The bastard lied to me. What kind of a world do we live in where a man's butcher refuses to serve him steaks? That's just a world that I just do not want to live in. Back to you, Tom. Good Time Charlie will return in the next hour for another segment of his award-considered rants and raves. Now it's time for the restaurant report with our very own Pierre Gonzalez. Yeah, so, me and my wife, we go to the local family restaurant, Todd's Place at 3rd and McHenry for dinner the other night, right? And we walk in there, and the first thing we noticed was the savory smell of Salisbury steak. Yeah, me and the missus, we have this thing for Salisbury steak, right? Well, well, she likes the Salisbury steak. I'm more of a ham steak kind of guy. But anywho, the service was fast because Todd only hires the high schoolers. The high schoolers have lots of energy because they need to earn the money for the cars and the video games that the kids all like these days. Our waitress's name was Sally, and she was a doll, right? She served everything quickly and with a smile, and the Salisbury steak, according to the missus, was very delicious. My ham steak was delicious too. Sally worked very hard for us, so we left her a little extra money so she can get to college, right? But the only thing that I didn't like was when I got up to use the washroom, there was a long line. When I get to the front of the line, the man in front of me, he got into an argument with the man who will give you a towel after you wash your hands in exchange for money. The man said that he didn't believe in giving the other man a tip because he didn't do anything to warrant the tip, right? So a fist fight ensued. I didn't get involved. Personally, I think both of those guys needed a kick in the patootie. But that's just me. So me and the missus, we left. But I would highly recommend going to Todd's on 3rd and McHenry because the food was reasonably priced. The service was fast, and the man in the bathroom will give you a towel after you wash your hands, right? Thanks, Pierre.
For those of you in need of advice, our very own Dr. Stuart Johansson will be on shortly to take your calls on the air. Hello, I am Dr. Stuart Johansson. The world can be an unkind place to many of us, and we search the world for even the most single of shoulders to cry on, or sage-like elders in which to turn to for your advice. Rest assured, my worldly listeners, I am here for you. I will be on the phone, so please give me a call at 555-1042. Kiala 1, you are on the air. Hi, Doctor. Um, my grandmother just passed away a few days ago, and um, I'm not really dealing with it very well. I see. Kiala, too, you're on the air. No, yeah, no, no, shut up and I'll ask him. H hello? H hello, are, are you there? Yes, my friend, I am here. What can I do for you? Oh, hey, doctor. Yeah, yeah, me and Jimmy were at the beer tent, right? And we've done run out of smoke. And we, and we were wondering, man, maybe you could hook us up with something like you did the last time. Dude, they're starting the bonfire soon. We need some smoke, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure I have no idea what you are talking about, and I am fairly sure you were not supposed to call this number, especially when I'm on the air. Goodbye. I'm going to have to talk to my producer about screening my calls better next time. Listeners, I apologize on behalf of him. He is going through a midlife crisis and can't seem to help but sabotage my show. What are you looking at, Barry? You're not fooling anyone with those hair plugs. Now get back on the phones before you buy yet another motorcycle. Call a four, you are on the air. Hello. Uh, I think we got disconnected. I was the one talking about my dead grandma. Um, I, I, I could really use someone to talk to right now. Well, tough cookie. Call a five. You're on the air. Doctor, I got the next two lines, and I don't appreciate the way you've been treating me here. I mean, I thought you were a doctor. Oh, I am a doctor. Well, aren't doctors supposed to have some sympathy or at least some form of compassion? Listen, bucko. If you want compassion, I suggest you go talk to your grandma. Oops, I forgot. She's dead. Ah, <laughs> oh, dude, what the hell? <laughs> well, <sighs> yeah. I suppose you're right. It is time to move on, and I have to let her rest in peace. Thanks, Doctor. You really came through for me. Be strong, Carla. <sighs> That's why I do this job. I have time for one more Carla. Carla 6. What is on your mind? Yeah, this is Duncan from Video Mania. I'm calling to let you know that your copy of a lover's quarrel has been checked out for over two weeks now. Yes, yes, well, I haven't watched it yet. I've been busy. Yeah, I don't care if you've been training dogs for the Iditarod. There is a list of over 40 hopelessly single guys out here who are in need of an uplifting romance story, and you're going to deny them that because you're busy? W well, I, I suppose you're right. Listen, we're all in need of an escape sometimes. Life gets hard, there's no denying it. But when your distraction stops on the other people around you, you need to get back in touch with reality and give those people a helping hand. You understand? Yes. Yes, you're right. Good. Have the movie returned by five or I'm going to find you and put a bullet in your kneecap. And with that advice, I shall have to end today's journey and start one anew to the local video store so our fair, fair Duncan will not put a bullet in my kneecap. And remember, listeners, to give the people around you a helping hand. This especially applies to you, Barry. This is Dr. Stuart Johansson saying good night and good day. <laughs>